Howdy folks, it's Friday. Welcome to Brain Rotters. We'll be talking about all the Easter eggs and references you missed in Falcon and Winter Soldier Episode 3. When Walker and Lamar are leaving the Flag Smashers headquarters, there is a brief moment on vandalism on the wall that shows a demon head. Now this could be a reference to Mephisto. Let's get our all our Mephisto theories out right now. When Zemo is introduced to Bucky in his cell, he begins reciting the words that he used to activate Bucky in Civil War. Falcon references to Chaka's death at the bombing in Civil War. This, of course, explains why the Condon at the end of the episode shows up in light of the news that Baron Zemo, T'Chaka's killer, has escaped. She's here to make sure he's put down or put back into jail. Machiavelli was an Italian diplomat that Zemo referenced during the episode. Funny enough, the mad thinker a villain in the comics cloned Machiavelli for whatever reason into a robot that Captain America fought. 1Q156 is a plate number that shows up in the episode. Now eliminate the Q and you get a 156. January 5th, 2006. 2006 would later be the year that Civil War, the comic book line at Marvel, would drop. Civil War being a core element of this episode. In Zemo's car collection at 10 minutes and 11 seconds, I wish I had a graphic of it, but I don't. Falcon actually is standing right in front of the Hot Wheel that Red Skull had during Marvel's Hot Wheel run. Suzanne Selby is in this episode. She's a minor character in the comics. However, she got this star brand power that brought together the Avengers against Galactus and his heralds. In her origin, she worked at a limestone factory that got shut down by Roxxon and moved to Madripoor. In the comics, she did not follow it. However, this was changed in the show for whatever reason because she did not follow it. Instead, she pursued her life of crime. We get another shot of Bucky's list. S. Whitaker is one of them on there. This is a reference to Steve Whitaker, a illustrator for Marvel for some years. Sam references Trouble Man, the song by Marvin Gaye, which at the end of Captain America 2, The Winter Soldier, it was played for him. Zemo references Sokovia when he mentions how cities fly. Madripoor is an actual place in the comics, not just the show. Now, Madripoor is ruled by Viper. This would be a place that Wolverine would frequent just to fight her. In the Madripoor sequence, Sam portrays Conrad Mack, the Smiling Tiger. Now, the Smiling Tiger is an actual character in the comics. He is a result of his Vietnam War vet dad shacking up with this dragon cult lady, and that gave him his appearance, his claws, and his fighting skill. Oh, and in the comics, he actually does frequent Madripoor. An Audi vehicle is seen in this episode. Now, this is the same type of car that has been seen across the MCU for some time. The Princess Bar is a straight deep cut from Madripoor in the comics. Now, this was a bar partly owned also by Tiger Tiger or Tiger Tiger or Tiger Tiger. I really don't know who was an overlord at the time for Madripoor. Power Broker is the bulk of the episode. He's even the title of the episode. He is a guy who augments the strength and agility of those who ask for it, but he drugs them and controls them afterwards. Dr. Wilfred Nagel is actually seen in this episode. In the comics, he's a deep cut who actually helped Erskine develop the first super soldier serum to give to Captain America. However, he couldn't replicate it after Erskine died, and thus, uh, like the show tells us, experimented on African-American people, especially the one, Isaiah Bradley, who is one of the only ones to survive the experiments and take on the mantle of Captain America. Sharon Carter is in the episode. You remember her from Civil War and Winter Soldier. Falcon enters Zemo's car in the back seat behind Buck. He asks Buck to move up his seat. This is a callback to when Bucky was behind Falcon and asked him if he could move up his seat in Civil War, to which he said no. And to which Bucky then said no to Falcon. Just a nice little reference there. Bucky in this episode told Sam that if he, Sam doesn't pick up the shield, then Bucky will do it. Because that means something to him. On many occasions in the comics, Bucky actually went on to take up the mantle of Captain America. Thank you all so much for watching. What did you think of this? Did you miss any of these Easter eggs that I mentioned? Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe now and have a great day.